But there's also this educational imperative in the sense that to fully educate students, they must not only learn how to interrogate their own history, her story, and culture, but those of other people as well. And while any teacher or professor should be able to engage students about the range of human experiences, there is a particular effectiveness when at least some of a student's instructors are from so-called underrepresented groups. One of my colleagues, Dr. Beverly Guy Sheftall at Spelman, has suggested that we need to continue the challenge that she issues about the curriculum of our schools in our, and our universities so that they move beyond what she calls the three W's. And that is a curriculum that is largely Western, white, and womanless. There is also an economic imperative for diversity and inclusion in our nation's educational system. Quite simply put, if students are not prepared to function well in a highly technological, culturally diverse, global economy, our nation is at serious risk. Corporate folk, therefore, ask certain questions of those of us who are educators. They want to know if our graduates leave high school and then college with an appropriate command of language quantitative skills, familiarity with technology, strength in critical thinking and problem solving. But we also hear the business world asking if our graduates know enough about their own culture and the culture of others to be both at ease and productive in a diverse environment. The comments that I have made about diversity and inclusion in our government, in the corporate world, and the world of education could also be made about not-for-profit social service agencies and about foundations. I want to move now toward closure and do so by sharing with you some very inspirational words. Also some insightful words, statements spoken by a diverse group of Americans that have been made about issues of diversity and inclusion. There's a saying that comes from Native American cultures, particularly associated with the Sioux or the Lakota people. It says, with all things and all beings, we must be kin. Also, from Native American cultures, we hear these words. We need to acknowledge what we're about to hear. Women hold up half the sky. A Chinese saying, that speaks to the power of diversity. One flower never makes a spring. Cesar Chavez, the exemplary Chicano leader, once said, our ambitions must be broad enough to include the aspirations and needs of others for their sakes and for our own. The beloved Rabbi Hillel was once asked if he could stand on one foot and say everything that is in the Torah. The Rabbi replied that he could. And this is what he said. What is hateful to you do not to your fellow men, and we add, and women, 
That is the whole Torah. All the rest is commentary. <laughs> there is a passage in the Quran that says this. We are made into nations and tribes that we may know and love each other. When I was a little girl growing up in Jacksonville, Florida, we would sing a song in Sunday school. It's a powerful statement about diversity and inclusion. I like to add the color brown so that the words to the song are these. Red and yellow, black, brown, and white, they are precious in his sight, for he loves the little children of the world. Helen Keller, a social activist who was deaf and blind from the age of 10 months, said these powerful words. Each of us is blind and deaf until our eyes are opened to our fellow women, until our ears hear the voices of humanity. The last words I offer in this litany of inspiring words come from one of my sheroes. And I am fond of saying that for every hero in the world, there's at least one shero. <laughs> These are the words of Audre Lorde who would describe herself as a black feminist, lesbian, mother, warrior poet. <laughs> Audre Lorde said, it is not our differences, it is our silence about our differences that harms us. In that spirit, let us speak up and act as well in the interest of making diversity and inclusion everybody's business in our American democracy. Thank you. Today at the City Club of Cleveland, we have been listening to Dr. Janetta Cole, Chair of the Board of the Janetta B. Cole Global Diversity and Inclusion Institute. Now we would like to return to our speaker for our traditional City Club question and answer period. We welcome questions from everyone, including guests. Holding the microphones today are City Club Director of Development, Jessica Allen, and Assistant Director of Development, Marcella Brown. First question, please. <laughs> 